what up, loved ones? My name is Ace. This is my lovely wife, Sheila. Uh, we have been married for three years. We have been together for eight years. Um, and welcome to Couch Conversations. Yes. And we're talking today about finances. What do you think about that? Money, 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 money. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think finances, mm, talking about finances can be very difficult, but it's also mm -hmm. very telling about your dynamic, you know? Mm -hmm. I feel like the issues around finances always speak to larger things. Yes. And I feel like we're at a pretty good place with like our relationship with money and like how yes. do we discuss things and go about it. I mean, do you agree? I feel like. I agree, I agree. Uh, yeah. But that's not where it started. I would say no. for sure. Yeah, right? I would say. the ghetto. Right, right. <laughs> 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 so I was the type of person that was, you know, obviously being in the industry and stuff and being young, so I wanted to indulge in all the finer things in life, you know? So I was always like, you know, if I'm gonna go somewhere, I'm, I want all seven pair, I want all of them, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, kind of just spinning aimlessly, like without even a thought behind it. Right. Uh, but now that, that that dynamic changed, bringing my wife into it, right? Because it's now it's caring for somebody outside of yourself. Mm -hmm. It's not just you focusing on you and getting the things that you would like. Uh, so that changed the dynamic because she came from a place, correct me if I'm wrong, where, uh, she had a lot of fears around money and being able to make money, keep money, that whole thing, and uh, whether or not we would actually be good together at uh, operating our finances and stuff like that. Mm. So it was a journey and it has been a journey. So uh, that's where we're gonna start. So I wanna know what, okay. what does that financial aspect look like for you guys? Yeah. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Sydney Corbin. I'm Khalil Corbin. Uh, we've been together for about six, seven years, married for three months, so we yeah. just started, we just sent it. Congrats. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah. Um, finances, we don't argue much, but one thing we do argue about is money. <laughs> Can you agree to that? Well, <laughs> sort of. Oh, okay. <laughs> Y'all gonna argue about arguing about it. <laughs> I would argue. But I think we both had two different childhoods. And so like my upbringing was, I grew up in a two parent household. And so I feel like my parents really did above and beyond to get me really anything I wanted, regardless if there were financial like insecurities happening, like they still were like, okay, if you want it, like we're gonna do our best to like provide for you. And with you, I feel like it's a little bit different, right? Yeah, for me, so even today, like I operate from, it's not the best thing in the world and our therapist just said I need to change it, but um, I operate from a negative standpoint with money. So if we have a financial goal in my head, we have zero. I don't see anything that we have. So she may want something and I instantly say, okay, we don't have it. Where's the next X amount of money gonna come from? If it's 10 grand, whatever, how much, where's that coming from? Cause I'm operating as if we have zero. So I always, I'm always feeling like survival mode. Oh my no gosh, I relate to that. Mm -hmm. I so relate to that. As you were talking, I seen my mom at the grocery store, like exactly. gotta put something back, you know, <laughs> or we, we, you know, like there's yeah. like always this script. It's an irrational fear in a certain sense where I always feel like, nope. If I'm not um, if I'm not mindful enough with my money, or if I don't do budgeting good enough, then you're not gonna get more, right? Exactly. You have to, and like this pressure on myself, and then here comes tourist season, <laughs> and you know, like they love, you know, he loves beautiful things, and I'm like, oh, but, but but you can't get that, and like just so I feel like that that dynamic I can relate to feeling almost like a scarcity yeah, thing that time, I had to no work through. No matter how much, it's scarce, it feels scarce. So I think the, the to your point of growing up in a two parent home, I think that we always like glorify, like talk about the positive side, which of yeah. course, there's a lot of positive in that, but I think it can also set you up for some negative later in life. Also, um, when you have been handed everything, mm -hmm. when you have been provided for in such a way that it's an expectation at this point. Yeah. And so you if you can I grew up in a two parent home. I was very much so, I'm the baby. I was very much so daddy's girl. I was very much so, gimme, 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 whatever you got. And I had no, I mean, I was a kid. So I had no sense of, you know, where this was coming from or how you were able to do it or can we really afford it? Cause that wasn't my business. Right. This is <laughs> what y'all want, this is how y'all want us to live. Okay, this is how we're gonna live. But now as an adult, having to spoil yourself or having to pick up the pieces where your parents left off can sometimes be a challenge. Mm. And if you never had to figure out how to get things on your own, then it's like, well, how can I keep up with this life that I have been afforded? So then fast forward to being married. And so now sometimes you don't have as much of an appreciation mm. for all of the things and what it takes to get it because you didn't have to, you know, that wasn't a thought. You mm. weren't 
thinking from a scarcity. You were thinking from abundance. You can have everything you want. You can have anything you want. And so I think both of those could end up with some negative connotations behind it, whether you grew up like scraping money together or whether you grew up with an an abundance of having anything you want at any time. Yeah, and Mm -hmm. that safety nut, Mm -hmm. like we would be going through things and in my mind, I'm like, we're good. He's not operating like that because he didn't grow up with that safety nut. I'm like, even if my parents are going through things, like I know at the end of the day, like if I need help with rent, they gonna scrape something to help me out. But so in my mind, I'm like, I'm always good. Mm -hmm. So he would be like so stressed out and I'm like, what are you stressing for? Like, and then I'm like, oh, like that's not what he's thinking. And of course my parents will like do whatever for him, but he's not operating like that. Those aren't his parents. So he doesn't know that security. This isn't his safety net. That's yours. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I think money is stressful for sure. Like the moment you said finances, I was like, ooh, <laughs> yeah. I'm stressed already. Yeah. I'm stressed yeah. already. Yeah, I'm stressed see, already. I, I love the topic though, you know, yeah. because do you? It's, it's, yeah, it's one of the things that, again, as you stated, if you do manage well and if you do think through it, you can get really good at it, mm-hmm. right? And then it does come with ups and downs, and you can prepare for the downs. But the thing for me is just shifting my mindset. Like, okay, I can go. Like we've had literal arguments because. If I'm in stack season, grind mode, <laughs> we don't have no money. I don't care. We we don't have nothing. Ain't no email. And she'll be like, yeah, can you pick up some McDonald's? I'm like, McDonald's? Wait, like, y'all, you, you got McDonald's got- money. <laughs> <laughs> like, my first and McDonald's I'd be like, I can't like get that, a McGriddle. Yeah. <laughs> a McGriddle? Yeah, they'd be like, uh, it's $3. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like stop playing with all me right, right now. All right, you're right, you're right, my bad. But it's just, I, you know, I got to break that mold of just being... The daddy from uh, Everybody Hates money. Chris. That's yeah. what I That's think. Me. If he's yeah. trying to tell me no to anything, I'm like, so you want to be the daddy from Everybody Hates Chris. <laughs> but luckily, I think we are pretty similar in our... In yeah, our... I think our upbringings are different. So mm-hmm. I, I was the oldest child, so I was the one that had to work. Even though my parents took pretty good care of us, I had to work for extra stuff I wanted. So it was no... My parents weren't buying J's. They weren't buying designer clothes. But every now and then, if it's on sale, but we got like one pair of shoes for Christmas, one pair of shoes for school. Better clean them up, keep them. Everything else was on your own. In sixth grade, I remember saving. I used to get $2 a day for lunch. I remember saving that $2 every day, pack my lunch so I could buy sneakers. Wow. So like, I've always been of the mindset, like, I got to get it. Not too like, hustling in middle school. In, in middle school, yeah. I remember saying, I get $2 a day. You know, shoes like 150 so right. you imagine how many days. A lot of $2 days. A lot of $2 days to get some pennies <laughs> and some Jordans. Or, you know, so like, that's, I that's appreciate everything that I, I work for now. Yeah. yeah, I think that's a great point uh, because I grew up in a household to where like my mother, I I feel like there was always something around bills. Mm -hmm. There was always some type of energy of whether or not it can be paid or whether or not. But the way my mom treated us in terms of like giving us things, I actually didn't think about that until now of how much I actually like appreciated money a little bit more than I I thought I did. Because like when I actually did get the $150 pair of shoes, I actually knew the worth and the value of that. I took care of everything that I had. So um, I think that was just very important even in, in, in our dynamic as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, it's... Uh, I'm like, what's so funny? <laughs> I want to uh, laugh. <laughs> uh, just because I think, like, you know, sometimes we would have disagreements about, like, uh, like what exactly we could do with finances. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because right. you would feel like, uh, well, we can't do this. And in my mind, like... I've always been the safety blanket. I'm more cautious. Yeah, she's always more cautious, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I've never had a safety net, you know what I mean, ever in my life. I feel yeah. like I've always been the safety net or the person that people would look to to come and help them out or to come and like, you know? So I, I think I always thought that when we got together that I was so great with managing the money <laughs> until it became the both of us, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I started realizing, I'm like, all right, I got some habits that may not benefit, you know, our marriage and our Listen, situation. Listen, why marriage will just, it, 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 just yeah. hold yeah. that mirror yeah. right up? Like, you yeah, thought yeah, you yeah. was doing something, thought was good, and yeah. then here go this man to tell you, yeah. no, you mm-hmm. ain't, do- no, it yeah. ain't that. Because I would say, up until we got married, like, I was, you know, I, I grew up a saver, and like, you know, I've always been a hard worker, but once I got, you know, financial freedom, I was, you know, kind of like you. I would buy whatever shoes I wanted. Mm-hmm. Even if I didn't wear them, you know, take whatever trips. We go in here, I got to stay at the Ritz. I got to stay at a five-star hotel. Mm-hmm. But now it's me and her and two little ones, so it's like, all right. And we trying to drag need, them kids to the five-star. I need star, to stay at trying. the five-star with the babies, you know? <laughs> I, can I stay at the Hilton or the Marriott? And then they get in, they be like, where the rest you know of them? <laughs> right. Let's do it. So, so that brings me, though, becoming a parent definitely makes you, like, rethink all of your childhood stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, com- comparing and contrasting. Well, how'd you grow up? Well, how'd you grow up? Well, what'd you learn? And so now it's like, well, 
are you doing your child a disservice? Like, are you doing your child a disservice if you give them everything and then they have no sense of what Probably. it took to get this? Yep. Mm -hmm. Or are you doing a, them a disservice when they see you, str you know, like, I, I think it, it can all... Uh, I see what you're saying. It can all just be, you know, good or bad, I guess. If they grow up and have everything, then they grow up and they do, aren't so working Well, I think you got to teach them both sides, though. Yeah. So you can have everything, but this is what you do to get it. Yeah. Versus, How do you do I'm that, though? Do you that, what does that look like? Please. I think you let them see the, the journey, the struggle, the mommy getting up, daddy going to work at 6 in the morning. But what if y'all are not struggling? Maybe not the struggle, but the the intention behind the every effort. action. The to, working to make, hard. Like, so working maybe the hard, working yeah. hard. Okay, okay. How do you teach the value, though? That part. Of the thing, right? Because... Kids want things, mm -hmm. so how do they? How do you show them? You have to value this PS5. Right? I think what he said about he had to clean would, the shoes up. I, I didn't have to clean my shoes up. I got some new shoes. You value something a lot yeah. more when it takes you, you know, six seventy-five months days to get to it. You know, so hours. I think maybe teaching your kids that okay, you can have that, but this is how much it costs, and this is how many let's say hours. Say you giving them an allowance. This is how many days it's going to take you saving your allowance to get that. Is how much more is it worth to you is now that you've had to sacrifice something to get it? Yeah. I think too, what I've seen That's is like point. the not replacing things so quickly. Interesting. If you break your tablet, you're not getting another one tomorrow. That I think is the is a disconnect because if you're constantly replacing, then it's like this doesn't cost anything. Yeah, it doesn't it, cost it's, I can just get another one if I if I mistreat it today, I can get another one tomorrow. And so I think those small things, as bad as you want him to have that tablet, because <laughs> he needs it right now to be quiet. I think it's those things that you have to be conscious about, and that is, that's the pressure. I agree. That's a delayed yeah. gratification. Delayed gra yeah. 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 So you're a business owner. I am. So how does that change your dynamic with yeah. finances like, as a couple? Yeah. Because he works in pharmacy. Mm -hmm. He is, yes. So I, I've been an entrepreneur. I was an entrepreneur before we met. I've had, you know, I've had businesses before we met. And I definitely think a big challenge and a lesson that we are consistently learning is, what is the lesson I had to learn? That we these learned. are family businesses <laughs> at this point, right? These mm. are family businesses. I have been a solopreneur for a decade. So, and you can probably relate to, like, mm -hmm. this is what I do. Mm -hmm. You cool, but this is what I do. And it's not like that when you are well, in well, a What does that mean? Well, that means that I, I own this business. It's my business. This is my business. My, this is what I'm yeah. doing over here with my business. Oh, okay. Doesn't really work like that when you have a whole husband who is, you know, supposed to be my partner in all of the things. So it would be like, our finances are together, but I have my business finances over here. And that has been a lesson learned. And then when he started to explore entrepreneurship, <laughs> that was another really hard lesson learned. So I'm gonna let you take it from there. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think. Um, I would say like with the business thing, um, it was figuring out how do we, how do we bring your finances in as part of the household and not just your business? Cause you might make money but then a lot of times you're investing it right back into the business. Right. I'm like, wait, you just said you made such and such. Oh no, I had to spend that on this event. And I'm just like, okay, well that don't, that doesn't count Income to the household. To the house. So yeah. I'm like trying to figure out well, what's coming in the household. I mean, I can, I can take care of pretty much everything, but how are we, I how are we figuring this question. thing out? Girl, what's the question, girl? I just want to know. So you're both bringing in money, right? We're both bringing in money, yeah. Does it matter who's bringing in how much money? Like, you know how sometimes we live in capitalism. I'm not mm -hmm. going to go on a rant. But, you know, you know how sometimes it's like, well, I'm making the money, so I get to call certain shots. I just get to have certain power dynamic in this household because I'm bringing in the money. But y'all are both bringing in money. We are, we are both bringing in money. And I, he, can, he might have a different answer. I hope you don't. I hope I'm right. But I am very much so, I don't need to be in charge at home. I don't think I've ever... Yeah, nah. No, I, I do not <laughs> want to take care of me. Please, please take care of me at this house because I have to do all of these things for my business. I don't want to do that at my at my house. Mm -hmm. So I don't think we've ever had, well, I'm only going to pay for this or I, we've never had those type yeah, we of never had issues with of like little who's paying, petty who things. has what. Yeah. But when stuff goes wrong, I think with and that is kind of what the business that we started together kind of it didn't it didn't work out. And so because that business did did, did not work out mm -hmm. and it was his first real attempt at real entrepreneurship, mm. I think he handled it really rough. And I think because he was trying to handle it by himself without causing any stress over here with me, mm -hmm. I think he stressed himself out. And him being stressed, trying to pretend like he wasn't stressed, was stressing <laughs> me out. So it still was a stressful situation. And so I think in that, it definitely taught us um, 
that we have to really be in it together. Yeah. And we started a business together on paper, but he took on 99% yeah. of the responsibility. And it got to the point where I couldn't separate it. It was like, okay, this is a business. I make this much, but most of what I'm making is going to like support this save business. save the business, yeah. You know what I mean? Like sometimes I'm like, I don't know why I got the rent this month. You got me? Yeah. But the business was like my part. I got to save this business. I got to save what we built together. And so I tried to take all that on without including you in probably what was going on financially. You thought I didn't notice how stressed <laughs> and crazy he was acting. Like I just didn't know anything was different. We definitely gonna notice. Mm -hmm. We definitely noticed. Can I ask a question about access? Like, yes. were you all like looking, like were you were you looking at what he was bringing in? Were you looking at what she was bringing in? Like like, are having meetings together? Like, what did that look like? Like, how did you know what? I mean, we were having be meetings about what needed to be paid, maybe. So like, who's paying what, as far as like the necessities, but we weren't bringing in all our money and saying, okay, I made this much, this you made that yeah. much. Uh, you know, we weren't doing that. We were concentrating on bills, everything outside of that. I don't care what you do. You don't care what I do. That's yeah. how we were operating. As long as, they, like, as, long as, yeah, as long exactly. the lights are still on. We were both on, financially secure before, yes. mm -hmm. and we doing what we want to do. But we had a joint account. I mean, we, we have a joint account, but it hasn't, it, it just hasn't been a conversation that we sat down and we said, okay, these bills are going to come out of this account. You are going to take it. It was like, Ish had to hit the fan and then we started having mm, the conversation around it. But we never had problems until we had problems. Absolutely, that <laughs> joint account tore me up. Did it? Yeah, it did. Tell us more. <laughs> you didn't want you didn't want to do it, or you did want to do I it. I did not want to do it. Yeah, you like, be more he, transparent. We well, it, we the first time it happened was it was after he proposed, and so he was like, okay, you know, we're getting married. Like, you know, we should like have an account where we're like, um, you know. Well, let uh, me get some time. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> you know, we've been married and engaged for a shorter amount of time than we were together. Okay, right? We've true. been together since college, and, mm -hmm. you know, ups and downs, whatever. But. I was like a new person, so I got a check. I was working in corporate America tech company, got my first bonus or equity, one of the two. I'm like, I'm gonna take this money and I'm gonna start something for us. And so she's thinking, oh, I could just, I could That's run true. through that money. Like, it's run through money. I'm like, wait a minute. Like, you have to contribute to this part. Y'all heard the McDonald's story, so his version of running through is eating out, but go ahead. Yeah. That's funny. But yeah, that was the context. Okay, thank you. That's that's accurate. <laughs> so wait, why why were you scared about the going going into well, the joint account? It was because like uh, I didn't really understand what that meant, right? So uh -huh. he's like a joint account. So I'm like, okay, like can I still keep my account? Like, and he's like, yeah, you can still keep your account. He's like, you were just adding to the pot. The problem was I wasn't adding to the pot. Like, <laughs> he. <laughs> Y'all, I'm crazy. He was putting like large chunks of money in there. And you were just coming by that pot with taking <laughs> spoonfuls. Oh, we should buy this oh, collection plate. Uh -huh. like, Wait, wait, wait. Literally, and it really, I, I don't remember what was like the, the point where I was like, okay, like this like isn't, you're not being fair. Um, mm. do, you, do you remember? Like, we had a like? conversation about something. Um, I, I brought it up like, hey, you know what? Like I'm putting all this money over here, it's for us, but. Oh, I was offended actually. Whereas you're, you know, I'm not seeing much contribution from you. You know, where you at? <laughs> where your money at? Where your money at? Where your So it didn't matter how much, <laughs> it didn't matter you just how wanted much, her to contribute. But this, yeah. yeah, this was the commitment, right? Like, mm -hmm. I got on a knee, so now we got to make a commitment but together. It, so me opening up financially was that. Yeah. And I'm going to give you access. Like, you don't have to ask me for nothing. Set up the bank account, credit union, ha card, you know, everything. So. But in my mind, I was contributing in other ways, right? Like, he hate when I bring up decor or, so, because like, oh, no, you know, absolutely. We, you know, he, cause he's not Do you like know how a, expensive an interior designer is? I can only imagine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, he, but he wasn't like buying things like, like hangers or whatever. Like he didn't really care about stuff like that. He's like, as long as I got this. It just appears month. at the home for them. Oh yeah, they yeah, just, just think appears. he like, oh yeah, when you get this? I'm like, months ago. <laughs> with, with I mean, like the money. I mean, I'm fresh out of college, I mean. We don't need no dresser. Like, I, I had a plastic I'll, dresser I'll, for I was like, the past 15 years of my life. I got these plastic <laughs> bins. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the problem with a lot Sirs. of domestic labor, especially associated with women, is that it's thankless. And if you do it well, which a lot of us do, it's invisible. Yeah. You don't know. You just come home, and there are new hangers. Or you come home, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it just looks nice. Something's different. You know, there yeah. might have been hours that went into that mental labor that goes into that. Everybody snacks. The mm -hmm. pig, the, this one is allergic, and this one likes mm -hmm. that one. And, and I feel like if you put, who was telling me this today? Somebody was talking to me about, like, that they sat down, and she called herself the house manager. Mm -hmm. And she was like, because mm -hmm. I'm a house manager, that's what I do. And if I tally 
tallied up all the different contributions, the money behind that, if you had to pay a chef, if you had to pay a maid, if you had to like pay a personal tutor, shopper. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, personal so. shopper, mm -hmm. like that this labor that we put in you couldn't afford us. is worth yeah. it is it has value. And just That's not a perk of being married. <laughs> Sir. <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry, what? With you saying that though, I'm just talking now just I kidding. do think her all the time. I'm like, thanks for making the house a home. Like, oh, yeah. it'll be some new pillows. I'm like, I didn't know I liked pillows. That's my yeah. line. No, I, didn't, I didn't know I liked this type of blanket yeah. because yeah. I'm just going to sleep, right? And how <laughs> I'm just we didn't have decor like that. So yeah. now it's, you know, I'm thankful for those small things. Thanks, babe. So how do you feel about the joint account now? Yeah, yeah. I'm okay with it because. Well, again, we talk about that safety net. My parents would still be randomly sending me money. And so mm -hmm. he would be so stressed out about like whatever additional bills that he was like taking care of. And in my mind, I'm like looking at Michael, I'm like, we good. Like, but he doesn't know that, like again, that safety net. And so I think he said this, and this is like when I really knew I could trust him. He was like, I never want you to look in your account and feel like you can't do something. Like mm. he say, like for example, he's good right. on his. Mm. And then I was like, damn, like, yeah, I don't ever want to be somewhere ball out of control and then like you can't go get drinks with your guys or do whatever. And so like I was like, okay, I, I trust him. And I was like, I want that same thing for him. And so we've been joining the counting up. <laughs> Can I ask the ladies a question? Both of you said that you were raised in two parent homes and you felt supported. Mm -hmm. And to this day, you still feel supported. Like, my parents not putting me no money in my account. Let <laughs> yeah, me just say, no, no random no. drops. No. Not at all. <laughs> no. I, I was just wondering because I did not have that experience that how do you think that uh, affected like yeah. you going into a marriage financially? Mm -hmm. Like your, your, your mind around finances with that background? Yeah. I think it was something, it was a little bit of like I wasn't prepared. And I didn't really understand like what that meant to like combine forces with someone. And I felt like because like, yeah, I watched my parents come together and raise me and bring this money together, but they weren't really like, I don't wanna say they weren't teaching me like the value of things, but to your point, like they weren't really saying like, hey, like this costs this much. And when we were coming together to talk about it, so like we had to kind of figure that out on our own. Like it's not like they were like dropping me lessons, like, okay, like when you have this partner, like you guys have to sit down and talk about finances. You have to talk about money. It just was like blowing up. And then we knew we had to communicate. Mm -hmm. And that's like really been like helping us like solve everything is like communicating. Like if I'm feeling like mm -hmm. in insecure about something and I know I want to buy something, I just have to communicate that with him. And then we even have an amount that we talk about like where it's like, I don't need to ask you for every little thing. What's y'all amount, girl? What's y'all amount? <laughs> uh, it's kind of like an unspoken thing, but yeah. sometimes it could mm -hmm. be, it could be anything, but it's just unspoken. Like, no, yeah. you, like, like for her hair, right? Yeah. She thought, She's gonna have to ask me about him. I'm like, no, like. Yo, I didn't. I want him care. to know how much I was spending on bundles. Oh no, no, wait. No, don't say it. 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 This morning, today, and, and, like, and he like he. Say what? I, 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 he wanted to call me out of my name. She won't. And I that. wanted to call myself. It's crazy. Yeah, it was, it's the, crazy. The, the thing is, it's, it's like over trips, the limit. right? We gotta have a conversation mm -hmm. about trips because mm -hmm. her and her girl's gonna go somewhere. They go. Ball out. This ball section out. <laughs> Wait a minute, hold on. <laughs> like, but let's talk. Have a good time. You know, but yeah. other than that, you know, it's nothing. I think communication is the bottom line. Like that is it across the board mm -hmm. because even with our situation, when the business was blowing up, he thought it was the end of the world. I thought this is just entrepreneurship. Like this is what happens. You're gonna win some, you're gonna lose some, you're gonna, mm -hmm. you're going through the boot camp of being an entrepreneur right now. He but he wasn't communicating it mm -hmm. to me. So so he didn't give me a chance to communicate that to him. Yeah. So I think mm -hmm. bottom line, when you're in these, you know, committed relationships, if you are truly committed to your partner, then commit commit to communicating. Yeah. Because he don't know what I randomly thought about this morning. I can't expect yeah. him to pull right. that out of me. Just like I don't know what's stressing him out. But when I get on, you know, online and you see, um, we just had this conversation about, you know, like mental health and just not having an outlet, thinking you have to handle everything. Like yeah. the black man feeling like he has to handle it all, mm -hmm. you know, everything has to be on him and, and mm -hmm. I'm just gonna ride his coattails. Mm -hmm. That's not how, that's not the relationship I wanna be a part of. And so I have, you know, done my best to be vocal in the fact that it ain't nothing that you gotta do by yourself at all. Nothing that you can, nothing that can come across your, your plate that I'm not willing to partner with you on. Mm -hmm. Whether you feel like, you know, it's something that I'm not gonna understand, whether you feel like it's something that I'm gonna uh, judge you for, blame you for, whatever it is, bring it to the table, we can talk about it. There's nothing that we can't do together. And I think that to me, the communication part, like if we can talk about it, we can figure it out. Yeah. We had a huge mm -hmm. shift one day and a big lesson. 
when we were getting married mm -hmm. and um, we got counseled by her godparents, uh, the Paynes, Reverend Payne, and her godmom said something to you that shifted her mindset and it was, I don't always agree with his decisions, but I trust the decision. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you really needed to hear that because after that it was like real trust, I yeah, mean. Absolutely, because I would be thinking like if I don't agree with him, then we're not supposed to be doing it. Like, I think we need to like <laughs> wait it out until we, <laughs> until we <laughs> agree, <laughs> until, <I'm> waiting, <laughs> until we come to an agreement because why would I do something I don't believe in? Like, that sounds crazy. But I think when I was looking at even how I was mismanaging money, and how he was like our like CFO, you know, like bringing out the spreadsheet, sitting us down, like to talk about the money. Like I wasn't doing that. So how can I sit here and like have this like, and not saying I can't have an opinion, but this like huge opinion, like about like why we shouldn't do something or why we should do it. So I think like he's been like doing like a really good job um, managing that for us, so. I think this is submission too. Like nobody wants to talk mm. about submission. Everybody yeah. hates it, but that's what it is. It's you pick this partner. Do you trust them? Yeah. Mm. That's what submission is. It's trusting that you have my best interest at heart. So I don't have to question everything you do. We don't have to talk about every, every decision because yeah. I picked you yeah. because I, I trust you. I trust your decision. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, these are great points. Yeah. Great points. Go ahead. Yes. And as I was thinking, I'm like, uh, it's so important to have financial flexibility because, like, like as we as human beings continue to like, even our dynamic as we continue to grow, like the structures in our systems that we once created are also evolving along with mm -hmm. us. You know, so I think like even being in entrepreneurship, like it's changing. Mm -hmm. You know, there was, yeah. there was a, a point to where I'm coming from a major situation to now being independent and now that structure and dynamic changed, you know, a lot right. for us to us getting married to like, you know, all of that stuff happened and like, now I was figuring out like, all right, now, what is it gonna look like now? What are the finances gonna look like? What's travel gonna look like now? Mm -hmm. You know, so I think just like navigating that allowed us to really build systems that really work and really serve us. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Cause like earlier on in our relationship and stuff, uh, you know, I had this encompassing idea of just like, I want to be able to handle it all and she don't be able to, you know what I mean? Yeah. To, yeah. to do anything. Yeah. So even in terms of building a business, I'm like, I want you to, I want to hold space for you so you can build your business, build it in the way you want to do it. Uh, but I, I didn't think I was all the way rational with the point because I also, like you said, like, you know, black men need help, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's seeking out these systems. Like I had to learn that, bump my head a few times, you know what I mean? To recognize like, man, I don't, I need financial help. I need the financial guidance so I can have these systems right. and these structures and stuff. Getting an advisor stuff. was so Getting helpful. Getting an advisor was a, yeah. was Realizing a that it's okay not to know how to do this. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. to reach and out. Most of us don't know how to do it. Even just having a conversation around it, I'm thinking about it, I'm like, it just feels so much yeah. like, you know, because what's right? Like, what's right? Never been you taught. You've literally never been taught. What's right, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, so, yeah, I guess I just want to dive into, like, a little bit of that uncomfortability around, mm -hmm. like, the finance and maybe what it's, what it's taught you in your marriage or what, in, during your dynamic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely experienced that. Um, like, with the business that she was talking about, that is something that I want. I wanted to be able to provide for everything. It's like, nah, you good. Mm -hmm. I got this business now. I'm working. You ain't gotta just concentrate on what you're doing. But when that didn't happen, it was like, oh man, we weren't even engaged yet. Mm -hmm. And so now, like you said, all those thoughts are coming back about, you know, not being able to be the provider now. I gotta I gotta go to her and say, hey, I'm short a little bit on the payment for this vehicle. Can you take care of it? Mm -hmm. That's hard. Mm -hmm. Especially somebody who's been financially stable for 10 plus years to mm -hmm. go back and say, hey, I might not have it this time. Mm -hmm. Are you still gonna want me? You know what I mean? Like wow. we're, we're still in that phase. Like we're mm -hmm. still dating. We're not engaged yet. And so all of that is playing in my head. Like, dang, did I, I messed up more than the business. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, she like, oh, ain't nothing going on. Like, it's, <laughs> you worry about that little, that little six figures? You know? Yeah, that little the business. Is I'm like, real. I might lose my it whole. Is, but yeah. the communication, feel, because he's yeah. thinking one thing, he's, a, he's assuming I'm going to respond a different way. And I felt like I am so blessed to be able to pick up where you, where you left off. I'm so blessed to be able to pick up the weight when you need me to. So why would I not? I'm not gonna look at you any type of way for that. Like I'm, I am Well, there's a lot of shame around money. Yeah. So no, yeah. for sure, yeah. for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Especially yeah. when you're used to having it. You're used to when you're used to having it, when you, yeah. you, you yeah, know. We take a trip, yeah, I'll yeah. take care of everything. Yeah. Now it's, mm -hmm. yeah. splitting it, you know, or yeah. I might right. need you to buy I think the, 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 the <laughs> ebbs and flows. Amazing thing about Sydney and I is we started off as teammates on track, right? Running track together. So. 
any time, and she's kind of always operated as teammates since we've been together, but the times I stepped aside and tried to do it on my own, I screwed it up, <laughs> right? I left my teammate out of it. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I learned that lesson. And so now I'm just like, money is, I'm going to talk about this money. Yeah. yeah. And she, you might have some uncomfort sometimes, so that's yeah. when you brought up the arguments. Yeah. But she just has a different opinion, right? Her opinion might be, Sure, like shopping spree, and I'm like, oh, yeah, well, I ain't buying no clothes right now. Like, yeah. so uh, the the biggest lesson we learned out of that is just to understand that, like, you know, she she has my best interest in heart. I call her my CMO, uh -huh. chief marketing officer, because she's like, no, buy it because you you deserve it. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. Like, I do deserve that. Or she'll tell me like, it's not make or break. You're like, everything is fine, mm -hmm. and I just need that. CMO response, like, no, spend the money. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, like, now I'm gonna spend it. Yeah. I'm curious, how does all of this show up in your parenting? Mm -hmm. So I know that you all have kids. Ace has two children, I'm a bonus mom. And um, one of the most rewarding experiences I had with the kids was like this last Christmas, they, we, well, two Christmases ago, we gave them their own bank accounts with their own cards because he was like very adamant. He wants them to start getting into budgeting and you know, like kind of value, like yeah. you said, you know? So um, they had money on their cards and I told them how much money they had and they had to make lists for like, who are we buying for? Who are they buying for? Everyone that's important. And I had like, be thoughtful about your gifts, you know? And they were like so proud of themselves. Like his son, he, <laughs> he went right into the jewelry store for his mom. <laughs> and he went in there and tried to pick the most expensive things. Like, I want that I'm one. Bust down AP. Yeah. He wanted, he was like, I want to spoil my mama. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and yeah. it was like, just to see the pride. And then they had to count, like, how much money do I have left? Okay, what could I get? It was just like, just I was just sitting there, like, so their support system. Like, you got it. You know the pin code. I'll be right here. Mm -hmm. But I just thought it was really cool just to watch them grow and think about being mm -hmm. mindful with money and just knowing that it doesn't just, like, come, you know? Yeah. Like that yeah, part. Yeah, so we have little babies. Yeah. Um, we have a two-year-old and a three-month-old. My son knows coin. That's all he knows. Like, he if knows he see coins. a coin, he'll coin. pick up a coin. He <laughs> don't know nothing about no money yet. However, yeah. one of the things that we have talked about, um, to your point, is is I think after five, they're not getting birthday parties anymore. We're gonna do trips, right? Oh. But because we love to travel, they're gonna love to travel. But they're gonna have to plan these trips. So they're gonna have a budget, mm -hmm. and they're gonna have to decide their destination. And you know, what pay. age are you gonna start that? Well, we'll see. Six, seven. Yeah, I said after. Yes. I know that I'm not doing a birthday party after five. That's five, the only six. detail I'm sure of. Okay, I would that. say five, six. So maybe six. So maybe six. six. But having them be responsible for this experience mm -hmm. and responsible for this budget, the, the like budget, knowing, right. okay. you know, you Everybody can either go eat, over there gotta, or you can come stay, here. Just stay. so they can start critically thinking of so do smart. you want these one pair of $100 shoes? Or are you like mommy and you gonna get five pair of twenty dollars shoes? You know which one right. are you gonna do? You got the same hundred dollars. Still going Roblox and just mm -hmm. listen. It don't work like that in so real life. Let's, compare that's, that's and let's talk about it. But I think those are my parents did do a great job of making me pay the bill when we're at a restaurant and add up the mm -hmm. tip and how much money should you get back? Go get the change. Those types of things. And so I feel like those small. Um, practical, like, life skills, yeah. letting them go through those things with you so they can mess some yeah. stuff up, mm -hmm. ask some questions, ruin it while it's your money before it's their responsibility. You know, those types of and things. And I think that, it starts that conversation. Yeah, about wow, you can't can just splurge. You, as right. you were talking, yeah, because you were you were saying when you when um, the business didn't work out, how you, how he he felt like, dang, this is the end, and you were like, this is just part of it's business part of ownership. It, yeah. But yeah. you you probably yeah. were primed early on, having those lessons with money mm -hmm. and figuring it out and being able to stumble. Like, because I know some people they don't have the ability to stumble financially. Yeah. If you stumble, it's a it's, fall, yeah, it's a and fall. there is no one to catch. Yeah. 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 And so, like, knowing, feeling that safety can actually allow you to be more creative with money, yeah. maybe? Yeah. Or it's just not the end of the world. Mm -hmm. I just want my kids to know. Like, I want them to go through as much of that in our home as possible so that when they go out into the world, it's not the end of the world if they make a mistake. Mm -hmm. yeah. This ain't the first time you lost some money. You know, like, it's okay. Smart. We're going to figure it out. We're going to get it back. But now you know what it feels like to lose mm -hmm. that money. You know, and we've experienced this together. So you don't think... You're stupid when it happens in real. You know, like you don't blame yourself. Right. You don't think that you're just, you know. So if you, if you have, a, if you y'all invest in something or whatever, you put money in something and it doesn't work out, you don't feel like it's the end of the world. She Me? doesn't. No. Yeah. No, I'm gonna figure it out and put some and more just, money into something else. Mm -hmm. 
and that oh, might not work out teach either. Me the way. But we're gonna figure it out, girl. <laughs> there's a psychology and that's the thing too, though. I'm very much so like yeah. how you were how you were one of y'all were saying, like, I'm you're worried about it, you don't have nothing. I'm the opposite of that. Yeah. He will mention something, and we might not have the money today, but I'm never, ever, ever gonna say out my mouth, we ain't got it. What, what do we got to do to get it? Mm. What do I have to do to work for it? I'm going to figure out how to get it before mm-hmm. I tell yeah. myself I ain't yeah. got it. Like, yeah, that's my mindset. I'm not speaking that over mm-hmm. my life, no. That's so a you, great point. I love that. Because <laughs> I believe that there's a psychology to money. Like, there's an actual understanding that money has a language. Yeah. But I think that uh, money was so connected to who I thought I was in terms mm. of my worthiness yeah. as a man and yes. as a person. Yeah. So, like, learning that, like, even if you don't have, you are worthy in that moment still, still yeah, you know what I mean? Like there's other attributes and things like, you know, cause that's one of the dynamics that I had to get through and even learn, of, like the tough part of learning like, okay, now I'm gonna come in, I'm this financial, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Not even thinking that, oh, there's also like emotions and compassion, all mm-hmm. this other stuff. Right. Like these other, I just thought finances was like the yeah. head of everything. Like yeah. I make the yeah, money. Like I make this money, everything good. What, what else you want? I, I, had, to yeah. I had to learn. I had to learn that. You know what I'm saying? So it's like. The emotions uh, of it, the, yeah. Yeah, and, the emotions. Am I gonna want you if you don't have the money? Right, that's what I want to talk about like yeah. so in, if y'all had those moments like what were those experiences like for you in, in in the tougher times in terms of like you know your connection and relationship to money i want to say makes sense. you know to that point it's a valuable point where everyone knows with getting money comes with not having money right there's a ebb and flow mm. and um it's just the natural language of money it comes it goes w- w- however mm-hmm. yeah and you know, we went through something and it was, you know, I was expecting, I mean, a, a ton of money to come, right? Yeah. And I ended up losing that opportunity. Oh. And like, I felt terrible because my identity was like, yeah, wrapped up, wrapped up in it. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, well, all right, where's it gonna come from? And now I have to solely rely on God. I've always only had God as my safety net, but mm-hmm. at this point it was like, it ain't even a phone call I could make. It's only God would present the next one. Mm. And I was the most insecure I ever had been in my life. Mm. Um, you know, I call it, I was a gray area person. Like, mm. I wasn't too optimistic on life. And, you know, I really needed a ton of validation from my wife here to um, just bounce back and get my spirit right. Because you can't have a broken spirit and, and get back to the money. You, you, you got to be whole that because part. it's going to come. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What would you tell, like, somebody who's going through something like that? Like, how'd you get through that? I I feel like those situations really made us stronger because I, and there was a period, I think, where he was, he was also, he had been laid off from work. And so then at some point, like, yeah, I was, that income was coming from me. And so that whole, like, what, 50? I'm sorry. I made an even worse decision. It wasn't laid off. I decided to not take the opportunity. Yeah, take the opportunity. Uh, right, yeah. so I made the choice to not take the money. Yeah. So it so was even worse. Like, I was like, He felt bad. like it was like, his fault, it. you know? Yeah. Were and you upset with him for that? No, or did you never. Support that? Because I felt like he trusted in that decision and I trusted him with it. Mm-hmm. And it was a mistake. Like, I make mistakes all the time. And there's been times where he's led us down like a great path or I've messed up, I've made a financial decision that wasn't best for us. And I'm just like, you, life is crazy. Like, I could, I could lose my job tomorrow, he could lose his job tomorrow. And like, you can't just fold on your person. I've made this commitment to him, he's yeah. made this commitment to me. Like, you can get sick, all these things can happen and with, with anyone that you're with. So if you wanna bounce from the person that you're with to go with someone else, like that same thing can happen to that person. And so like, I was, it's not that I just had just realized it, but it was just like, I, I know we can get through this together. Like we, it was talking through him, like have saying like, we eventually like, we'll have this support, staying positive. Like even though I didn't like spreadsheets, we'd have to sit down and do spreadsheets together. We'll have to communicate. Like maybe we have to downsize and like, yeah, of course, like it didn't feel good. Like I, I would, yeah. you know, I didn't, want to have to downsize, I don't want to have to downsize like where we were living, but like, that's just what we got to do for right now. We gonna make it work. To your, your question of, of that advice though, mm-hmm. it's, you know, if you do have someone like, you know, I'm, I'm blessed in this situation to have a partner like this. Um, but a lot of times it's what you tell yourself, you know, going back to what Ace just said about the value. Yeah. You have to look in the mirror and tell yourself like, I'm more than that opportunity, more than that money. Yeah. You have to stay physically active. Don't 
I mean, hey, by all means, you know, take your moment, binge watch your TV shows, but you got to bounce back next week. Mm-hmm. You know, start putting good stuff back into your body. You have to do the things that make you happy, like forcing yourself yeah. mm-hmm. right. to be in a better situation because it can consume you. That gray area I spoke about can take over your life and you look up five years from now and you're still that person. If you Absolutely. don't bounce back, so allow yourself a quick amount of time and get right back to it. You, yeah. you can't stop. It's not It's not permanent. It's not forever. Right. That part. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like that's a great place to end. I feel like that summarized the, everything that yeah, we all discussed yeah. is that there's ebbs and flows, mm-hmm. yeah. flexibility in finances, I guess, mm-hmm. and that mm-hmm. it's not if but when. <laughs> there will be changes hey, financially. Yeah. Life be life and it's yeah. coming. Yeah. <laughs> and just go through it together. Like you guys against the problem. I've been saying this because I keep thinking about it all days, us against the problem and mm-hmm. not us against each other. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. thank you for sharing. It's hard yeah. to talk about money. <laughs> yeah. It's very, yeah, like, it ins- yeah. you know, a lot of people kind of keep it hush-hush. <laughs> we all feel like it's money and sex. We all doing it. We all feel like we're supposed to be good at it. Don't yeah. necessarily get training around it. Right. <laughs> mm-hmm. So right. thank you for talking mm-hmm. through that. Yeah, man. I yeah, definitely yeah. am thank taking you, mental you. notes. We appreciate it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Because this is this is healing, man, a lot. You know, a lot of this is, is healing for me in, in yes. general because, uh, you know, I'm at a point to where in my life where I'm leveling up community, you know what mm-hmm. I mean, away from, like, the community that I was used to. So to hear brothers and, and, and women speak about their truths, you know what I'm saying, uh, in terms around finances, conversations that were so difficult at one point in time for me to hear similar stories and you, you share similar stories. Uh, I just think that healing element is important for us to be yeah. open and authentic with each other. So mm-hmm. um, I just appreciate y'all being here, man, and sharing your perspective and sharing your advice and your knowledge. Well, I really pleasure. appreciate that. Pleasure. And can I add one thing onto that? Is Absolutely. that I feel like I'm really just thankful for all the men sharing today because I feel like I'm passionate, especially about black people and black men separating their worth from their ability to work and their ability to be like, I am not only worthy because I'm making money. I'm not only worthy because I, I provide. I provide those things are great, but like you're already worthy. And so I'm just really glad just thank yeah. you for sharing. It was really inspiring mm-hmm. for me yeah. to hear that. Yeah. Definitely. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, because I think the world kind of teaches black men that, that our value is tied in. 100%. Our what finance, you can do. Strong yeah. legacy. How we can provide, you know, how we show up in our appearance, you know, what kind of designer you have on, what kind of car you drive. Mm-hmm. Everything is centered around money mm-hmm. when it comes to our value. Mm-hmm. So I think a lot of times we internalize that and we don't have an outlet to, like, say, hey, Facts. I'm not doing as well today. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Bro. Yeah. Take it easy on the brother. Yeah, you know? yeah, real we, talk. <laughs> seriously. Real talk. Yeah. Because like even for me, like yeah. <clears throat> when we got together, I had been out of school for 10, 15 years, had been making six figures for a long time. So everybody in my circle saw me as like the pinnacle, you know? Mm-hmm. And so a lot of that was in my head. Like, dang, how am I gonna show up for these people? Let people down. And mm-hmm. and show them I went broke or I showed them I lost a business or mm-hmm. I lost lost money. You know, how is that gonna affect my relationship with them? How how are they gonna see me now? And like that's something I had to battle through. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, not not identifying with what you do and how much you make mm-hmm. is a is a big part of I think what black men struggle with. And trusting your partners too, because I think the submission we always talk about the woman not trusting the man enough to submit, but I think man has to trust the woman. You have to trust us with your feelings. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. You have to trust that's us real. to have you in the way that a woman can have a man. I agree. Mm. Yeah. And it's something I had to learn. That's on yeah. period. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah.